everyone's entitled to a point of view in this meeting and said, so I don't care whether you're 35 years old or you're 21 years old, I want you to come over with a point of view. Uh, you're all very welcome to the business breakfast briefing and we're absolutely thrilled to have Stuart Lancaster here, who's head coach of Leicester since 2016, we're just saying, I can't believe where the time's gone. You're very welcome. And of course, our own alumni, alumnus, Hugo McNeil. When I'm watching that, I'm thinking, that looks a lot like Leinster, which is great. Yeah. A compliment to us, yeah. we, you know, what goes on at Leinster. Um, but you've got that group there. I would constantly drip feed them podcasts or leadership thoughts or what is emotional intelligence, self-awareness exercises, feedback. I'm constantly looking to develop them as a, as a leader. I didn't actually know the reason why Leinster would produce so many homegrown players. You know, 95% of Leinster's squad is from Leinster. Yeah. The majority from this area, isn't yeah. it? You know, some, you know, spread it around five or six schools. My first year, I went up to Donnybrook and I watched the school's cup game. I was like, I get it. Yeah. You know, I get it. Unconsciously, when I came to Leinster, I immediately just integrated the young players into the senior squad seamlessly, really, you know, because it seemed obvious. Well, why aren't they in the meetings? The academy lads should be in the meetings. Why aren't they in the meetings? So some of the old academy lads are in the meetings. And why aren't the academy coaches in the meeting? They should be in the meetings. Um, then in the meeting, um, I'd explain to the playing group, and everyone sat in the playing group, from Johnny Sexton to Scott Fardy to Scott Penny, and I made sure that if a young player gives a point of view or goes on the training field and tries to do something and makes a mistake, they aren't ridiculed for it. They aren't, they aren't made to feel stupid for saying something. Um, because that's, that's where a lot of teams get it wrong. It's, you try and give the young players a voice, say, oh, we want to empower the young people, but then you give them a voice and then everyone shoots them down or they take the mick out of them or the coach belittles them. Um, and then suddenly, I guarantee you, they won't speak at all. That integration piece um, and how they're in, involved in meetings, come in to express their point of view, um, be confident they can do that without being ridiculed, um, I think is, is key to a lens of success. We've got a good academy, we've got a good senior team, but it's the integration that works the best. Some days the academy can't make the team review. Monday morning, team review, um, and uh, I'm reviewing I don't know, the Glasgow game from this weekend, and we're going through all the lessons learned, and these academy lads haven't played in it. But they've got like a gym session down at Donnybrook or whatever. So I'll say to Noel or Trevor or whatever, I said, bring them up, 11 o'clock, I'll meet them and I'll go through the review with them, even though they didn't play it, because they can take the learning from it. And they can look and see that I'm valuing them. When we do training sessions, we never train with the team in mind that's playing at the weekend. We train with every player. So if I'm starting, if I'm doing a session on Monday or Tuesday and it's a, it's a flat out session, the young lads are integrated from the start. They're not holding bags, just like running the opposition plays. They're involved in the decisions, they're involved in the training sessions um, uh, from the very start and, and that's, that's the key to it.